everyone, I'm Elise Thompson Richards, editor in chief of Food Engineering. Today I'm chatting with Shalma Srinath, head of downstream processing for Salibre, in recognition of International Women in Engineering Day. Srinath covers her experience in the food industry, the importance of taking on high stakes projects, and developing a diverse skill set. Let's get into it. Hey, Shalma, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks, Elise. Uh, thanks for having me on. And so I'd like for us to to back up and get to know you a little bit. Um, you know, what was it that drew you to engineering and the STEM field? Um, so um, growing up, I uh, used to like, you know, problem solving and uh, I used to like math and science. Uh, uh, so um, engineering felt like a natural path. Uh, I also grew up in an Indian household. So there was like a strong emphasis on pursuing STEM careers. Uh, chemical engineering was uh, not like a popular choice at that time. Um, um, so, you know, com compared to like fields like computer science and electronics and, and all, but I came across chemical engineering first in uh, a high school lecture where they were giving us like different career options um, on uh, you know what all uh, paths are open for like you know stem stem uh, majors so um uh, and I, I i felt like um you know related to that uh, to chemical engineering because uh, you know i used to like watching videos of how things are made uh, and just knowing the processes behind uh, everyday uh, you know products you see in the marketplace so that's how uh, you know i came across chemical engineering and at that time like i had a few uh, good chemistry teachers so i wasn't like intimidated by the chemistry aspect of it um so yeah Well, I'm, I'm sure that made all the difference. And so thinking forward to your um, college education, I'd love to hear more about your college experience and what was your class makeup like? Yeah, um, so my class makeup was uh, actually there were uh, quite a few like um, around 10 uh, girls and like, uh, you know, in a class of like 40s. And there, that was an anomaly like that year, because typically in uh, the, the college I went to, the, the ratio is like uh, heavily skewed towards boys. So it's like a seven to one kind of uh, ratio. But uh, there were, uh, you know, uh, like 10 girls in our class and uh, the remaining were boys. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was a good experience, you know, so you had like uh, for your lab projects or, you know, you had group projects and where you would be the only girl. But uh, I felt like most of my classmates and peers, like they were extremely smart and, uh, you know, supportive and respectful. So uh, most of the times there, like I didn't really feel like, you know, being the only woman in the group. Uh, and I think that helped, uh, you know, build the confidence to like, you know, ask questions and speak up, you know, anything technical related or, you know, um, anything like that. So so that that helped. Sure. And I'd love to learn more about how you found your way into the food industry. Yeah, so uh, so I came uh, first across like the food industry um, when I was doing uh, my master's in Cornell, and uh, we were uh, you know we were um, supposed to pick a stream of focus. So there was like a, a broad range to choose from, being like you know for chemical engineering. So um, energy and economics was one, semiconductor was one, drug development, and and then there was food. And uh, so I was like uh, really drawn to food because you know it's uh, something like uh, very fundamental and uh, something which affects. people's lives daily so uh, just the idea of like being able to contribute to that uh, it re resonated like really well with me so I took a few courses uh, on like food engineering and uh, at that time also like I had just moved to the U.S. and I was like really fascinated by all the options you know available at the stores and all the processes which made made it possible uh, so I just wanted to know um, you know more about the processes behind that and uh, so when I graduated like and, and I was looking for a job an opportunity with Kerry opened, uh, and that's how I got into the food. That's incredible. And that's a great segue into my next question, which is, you know, what are some of the projects that you've worked on either at Kerry or in your, you know, future roles? Sure. Um, so uh, when I started with Kerry, I was a process engineer uh, in a plant uh, which made fermented ingredients and actives. Um, so I um, so starting off, like most of my projects were like yield improvements, uh, cost uh, savings. Uh, so one main project I worked on was like a spray dryer optimization. So there was a spray dryer which we were trying to optimize for the uh, the various uh, different products we were running on. So I would uh, you know collect data on like the different products and. Um, 
uh, kind of optimize their runs. Um, and that also, like all the data I collected, that also fed to like a new dryer design. Um, so ultimately, like, you know, in a couple of years, like uh, as we max out on the capacity of that dryer, it uh, we actually built like a second uh, dryer. So that was like a main project I worked on in the plant. And then there was, um, you know, um, just um, Six Sigma type projects where like tightening the specifications, like reducing wastage and uh, things like that. But um, uh, I uh, then like took on like a like a broader role with Kerry where I would support like different um, plants uh, across the U.S. and uh, also internationally. And at that time, uh, Kerry had acquired a business called Wellmune, um, which is like a beta glucan derived from yeast. So uh, I was the engineering lead on that and uh, worked with like a lot of uh, plants uh, to like optimize the processes and like get that up and running. Uh, and then. Um, you know, with Kerry, like um, my first four years, most of uh, my work was focused on like uh, drying. Like, so I worked on like vacuum drying, uh, you know, freeze drying. Uh, um, and um, then I took on like a project engineering role. Um, so that would be like CapEx project uh, expansions and new build outs. So uh, one of the most, um, I would say, rewarding and challenging projects was uh, uh, one, uh, we installed um, some soup sensors lines in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, so that was uh, really exciting because it was a multi-million dollar project and uh, I was leading that. Um, there was like, you know, mixing lines, freezing, uh, and then we were installing like uh, robotic packaging and palletizing. So it was like working with like all the departments, like the other plant, uh, you know, the, the whole plant team and uh, working with like a third party engineering firm and all the vendors. And we saw it like all the way through um, uh, the, the concept. Uh, conceptual design uh, and all the way through like uh, you know installing uh, and uh, commissioning and um, in between all of that like COVID had hit so there were like a whole slew of like restrictions like travel restrictions and you know people flow um, social distancing protocols and, and all of that so you know managing like a fast-paced project through all of that like that was uh, kind of challenging but uh, looking back you know I feel really proud of uh, you know uh, having uh, you know managed that project and successfully uh, you know run into completion so so that was like a, a main like project engineering role um, I did and and then like you know I moved to Beyond Meat where I uh, worked on like similar projects like um, so uh, installing um, process lines uh, across like North America and Canada uh, and like um, improving like throughputs and, and all of that. Uh, right now in like Celebre, like I mainly work on like downstream processing. So like purifying and isolating uh, small molecules, which is like derived through fermentation. Uh, so, um, you know, on a, any given day, like you can find me like in the lab, uh, you know, developing processes or like in the pilot plant. Like, so the, uh, we built a pilot plant here in San Diego. Um, so I was involved in like the design and, uh, you know, equipment selection and all of that. So uh, and it's up and running now. So that's uh, that's great. Um, so, um, you know, we run pilot runs and then we discuss with like commercial manufacturing, like contract manufacturers to scale up our product and do manufacturing runs. And we also work, you know, with design firms and all to see like what it would look like if we build a manufacturing plant. So. So, yeah, that's that. Those are some of the projects uh, I have worked on. That's incredible and such a, a range of experience. And given that, I'd love if you could talk a little bit about how or what the difference are, differences are culturally between these, you know, major food companies like Carrie and Beyond Meat and maybe a smaller company like Salibre. Yeah, uh, I feel like uh, the the major differences, like I have noticed, is that uh, you know for uh, bigger projects like cap capex projects to go through, uh, like with uh, with uh, like a bigger company, there is like a lot of like you you plan like way in advance, like so you have like a two year capex or a five year capex, and you plan like way in advance, and it's much more structured. Um, so so there is like uh, you know a positives which comes with it because like you have the time, uh, you can plan really well. Uh, uh, you know, um, so it's it's much more organized. Uh, whereas, like with smaller companies, uh, I feel like um, the good part is that you get like approval right away. You know, uh, if there is a capex, you know, like a piece of equipment you want to buy, which is like critical for your operation, like you can you know just talk to the. 
uh, the leadership team and get approval right away, which makes things move faster. But at the same time, it comes with a lot of like, you know, managing, like juggling a lot of things. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there are like uh, a lot of priorities, like priorities change, um, like on like on a daily or weekly basis uh, for smaller companies. Uh, so, um, yeah, so those those are like the main uh, differences like I felt. And thinking about diversity in these spaces, you know, what have you experienced over your career? Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, working in engineering, it's, uh, in you know, it's extremely rewarding, uh, you know, but being like a male dominated field, it is challenging. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think most of the, uh, most of the times it is because like people are still getting used to women like coming uh, into these technical roles and like being the technical lead uh, um, on, on these roles. So sometimes like, you know, um, um, sometimes when working with like uh, non-engineers, like I felt, you know, sometimes they ex expect uh, not they won't expect a woman to be the technical lead. And then that can you know come across as like dismissive or, you know, they may have, be skeptic. Uh, but uh, uh, but I feel like that will change. Like, you know, as more and more people like women uh, enter these, uh, you know, um, the engineering roles and like thrive in it, that's that's going to change. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm like really hopeful uh, that, uh, you know, it's uh, it's on like a really good, good path there. And um, thinking about that, do you have any examples of when you felt like you were particularly supported in your workplace? Or alternatively, do you have any ideas for how these companies could better support women or, you know, people of color? Sure. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, early on in my career, like I was uh, extremely fortunate to have like really uh, good supportive bosses. Um, so, uh, you know, most of my managers, uh, uh, when I started off with Kerry, like they were really supportive and, uh, you know, put me in charge of like, yeah. Uh, important projects which uh you know which gave me the confidence uh and it also showed their trust in me uh to carry out like a, a huge project um so I, I i feel like that that went a long way in uh, you know um in letting myself know that you know this is something like i could do because uh, without given that opportunity like i would never know if you know what was possible so uh, i feel like uh, yeah to going to your question about like what companies could do that is like a big thing uh, you know uh, putting um, you know women or you know other minorities in charge of like you know high stakes project projects uh, so that they get a chance to prove themselves out like that's that goes a long uh, a long way and uh, you know most of my uh, um, managers have been like uh, really encouraging to you know letting uh, telling me to like speak up and you know give um, and uh, showing that like they value my um, you know input uh, as much as like everyone everybody else so uh, that is also uh, you know gone a long way like so I have had like a um, um, a manager like um, I, when I joined, like he was a director of engineering at Kerry, and he was like you know extremely supportive, and he would recommend me for like you know high stakes project, uh, and that really helped. And uh, there was another uh, manager when I did the um, project engineering role. Uh, you know he would uh, uh, give me um, like really good feedback on what I was doing good. Um, so so that made me feel like you know uh, much uh, better as to like you know how. I'm managing the project and you know and also like uh tips on like how I could improve and like where I could grow uh in a positive way so that uh you know th that further like improved my confidence and I um I also feel like I haven't uh, had like any formal mentors uh uh in my career but I feel like uh, a mentorship is also good like in in what from what companies can do um so right now um you know as a part of Celebre and um, so there is a organization called Biomade, uh, which is like a coalition of like all the uh, bio-industrial manufacturing companies and they have like a mentorship program so I mentor uh, through the through that program and I found that that is like uh, uh, really good to you know connect with people who are just starting out in their career and like you know looking to uh, step uh, into the industry so um, because initially like when I came across this I was thinking you know what would I have to offer uh, you know I 
I, I wasn't sure about that. But then like I realized that, you know, there is so much like knowledge um, and, uh, you know, just experiences you accumulate without realizing. And uh, uh, and uh, for someone who's just starting out like that is like really beneficial, like it gives them a head start and you know, it helps them like build their, their confidence as they are like interviewing and, you know, looking for jobs and just just even like starting out in the career. So. Definitely. It always helps to have someone in your corner, regardless of, of what the industry is or, or what the role is. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy to hear that you're passing on your knowledge and experience to the, the next generation. And that leads me into my next question, which is, you know, what other advice would you give to women who are just starting on their engineering journey or their journey in the, the food industry? Sure. Um, I, I feel like, uh, you know, not being afraid of change um, and taking on like challenging roles early on in the career like that, that helps a long way because uh, this is something like I like to remind myself as well that, you know, you are you may not be like 100 percent ready for like taking on a challenge, but like some of the learnings happen on the job. And, uh, you know, you you do grow uh, in the process. So, uh, you know, be open to, you know, um, change and um, taking on new challenging roles and and also like building a diverse skill set, even if it's in engineering. I feel like something which has helped me is like uh, building a diverse skill set, you know, um, knowing like what other departments do and, you know, how you can make their lives uh, easier. And uh, also like um, from a skill standpoint, like, you know, um, understanding like the R&D aspect of it, it as well as like the project management aspect of it that helps uh, because in this industry I feel like having like a broad um, range of skill sets um, like that can that can go a long way um, also um, I feel like um, you know building your network and maintaining it like that is uh, really helpful because I I try to you know maintain and uh, my network through link LinkedIn um, and because I feel like you know when you are starting out in an industry without uh, you know much contacts uh, it really helps to you know build your own support system uh, so that you know that you know when you're facing a hurdle uh, there are people like whom you can reach out to and you know and and also do the, the same for others right so yeah, that's incredible professional advice. And I like this idea of building a diverse skill set. In your, you know, experience, how did you go about doing that? Uh, I I feel like in my experience, it was not intentional. It just like it was just that I was uh, just open to the opportunities which came across, uh, and I didn't uh, you know uh, shy away from like the uh, the new opportunities which came came up. So uh, so it was I've always been like curious uh, of you know the the different uh, the different skills involved and the different roles and and all of that. So uh, you know as uh, uh, I was navigating through my career, like just being open to like new opportunities and like new projects. And, you know, whenever I'm put in a, uh, a new project or something new comes by, like, you know, I think like, what, what can I learn from it? And, you know, how, how does that like help me grow my knowledge? Right. Like, the, so that has, uh, I, I feel that has gone a long way. Definitely. And as you continue through your career and as, we continue to evolve in the food industry. What would you like to see happen? Uh, I uh, I would like to see uh, you know like a. Uh, like I mentioned, like a more diverse and inclusive uh, workforce, because at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, about making, uh, you know, doing things which will make the world a better place, right? So I would like to see like a more diverse and inclusive workforce. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, going looking at the like the technical side of things, uh, I feel like there is a lot of development uh, happening in the sustainability sector, uh, especially now with like AI coming on board, and uh, um, it will be, uh, you know, good to see how we make good use of uh, AI and, you know, how we can use AI to complement uh, the human skill sets and uh, see, uh, see like how that uh, you know, synergy is going to uh, to work um, and also like from a sustainable standpoint like uh, I'm uh, you know watching the the market for um, you know alternative meat and plant-based uh, uh, sector uh, I feel like as time grows like consumer ac acceptance will grow um, so um, so hopefully like you know we see like a lot of growth there but ultimately like yeah I, I feel like um, if uh, if we move towards like a more inclusive workplace that'll be great. 
I certainly agree. And we at Food Engineering are watching those those developments as well. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens over the next few years. But I want to thank you again for sharing your time with me, sharing your expertise and your insight. And I really appreciate it. And I hope our audience does too. Yeah, thanks, Elise. Thanks again for having me.